How's it going folks? In this hands-on video, I take a look at iOS 16 beta 3, and that includes, yes indeed, the clownfish wallpaper. But of course, there are tons of other additional changes and features. Let's take a look at what's new. So here is the software update screen for my iPhone 13 Pro Max for iOS 16 developer beta 3. And as I mentioned, the clownfish wallpaper has made its return. Now, this right here is actually just an image I pulled off of 9to5Mac because I didn't have the clownfish wallpaper until early this morning. So it finally appeared under collections under the add new wallpaper interface, as you can see here. And yeah, this is a throwback to the original iPhone clownfish wallpaper, which appeared in promo materials. And of course it was shown by Steve Jobs on stage. Now this wallpaper for iOS 16 has a trick up its sleeve. So obviously it's higher resolution, but also it works with the iOS 16 lock screen background effect. You can see the clock hidden behind there. So of course this wallpaper will also appear on the lock screen if you choose to configure it that way. You can also blur it out so it isn't as distracting. Now let's talk about some of the updated release notes. So if you go to settings and then you go to general and then you select about, you'll notice a difference when you tap on the iOS version which shows you your release notes. So let's go ahead and tap iOS version and you'll see your release notes along with the build number. So uh, this is very nice feature for iOS 16, but it's been updated here in beta three. Here's how it looked in the prior beta. So I don't know, which one do you prefer? Let me know down below in the comment section. Now the reminders app includes a new setting that allows you to showcase a badge for items that are due today. So these items here, any items that appear in your today list will now show up as a badge notification on the lock screen if you enable this new feature. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that. So we're gonna go to settings, I'm gonna scroll down to reminders, and then we're gonna scroll down, you'll see badge count include due today. So include both overdue and due today items in the badge count. So you turn that on, now notice one item in today and one new badge. There's a new test alerts option under notifications. So if you go down to settings, notifications, you'll see the test alerts. I'm imagining that's gonna be like the, this is the test from like the 90s on television. So when emergency alerts are being tested, I'm guessing you now have the option to receive those tests on your iPhone. Now this is a subtle change, but you'll notice the quick note keyboard animation has a little difference. You see how the keyboard sort of comes in a little bit after the fact. And also you'll notice that there's no save option until you actually insert text on the quick note, which will help you prevent a uh, blink quick notes from appearing in your notes app. So kind of a nice feature there. Now let's talk about some updated wallpaper preferences in the settings app. So go to settings wallpaper and you'll see right down below, change your wallpaper from the lock screen. You get a nice little animation that basically shows you how to alter your wallpaper directly from the lock screen. So basically long press and then, you know, add or edit etc. You'll also notice that the app icons are now blank, which is less distracting when you're trying to preview what the wallpaper will look like on your home screen. So here's how it looked previously on iOS 16 beta 2. Now along with that, there's an updated lock screen set wallpaper interface as well. So let's go ahead and long press. Let's go ahead and add a new wallpaper and we'll just choose one here. Let's just go with the iOS 16 wallpaper. And now notice when I tap done, you see the updated interface with the blank icons there as well to help you to see what the home screen will look like with less distractions. There's also two new lock screen clock fonts. So if I go in and customize and tap on the clock here, you're gonna see not six fonts, but you're gonna see eight. And these two right here are the new ones. So this one actually isn't new. This is the iOS 15 lock screen font, the skinny font there but you also have this one as well if you want that. That's new here in beta three also. So of course you can still go in and customize the colors as well. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what it looks like with the skinny font from iOS 15, looks good. There's also tweak notification center swipe animation. So you'll notice here on iOS 16 beta three, the fade in occurs a little later than it does on beta two. Very subtle, but indeed a slight difference. And you also notice better occlusion for the lock screen clock. So less buggy uh, lock screen clock stays behind the elements a lot better. And you also notice that the lock screen clock 
fades in a little differently here on beta three. You also notice a tweaked earth animation on the lock screen. So now the earth no longer spins a little bit when it comes into view when waking your device. See, it just sort of appears, but on beta two, it spins. Now you also notice that the events widget on the lock screen will link directly to an event. So you can see there's my calendar. Now let's go back to the lock screen. I have the events widget. Watch what happens when I tap that events widget. It goes directly to the event just like that. Now you'll notice a slightly tweaked tab glyph in the Safari preferences. So let's go to Safari in settings and see tab bar and single tab. Notice the slight differences in color between the two. This one is gray. This one is more of a bluish tint and same here as well. And you'll notice additional spoken content languages. I believe this is new in beta three, but correct me if I'm wrong. I don't believe I saw these spoken content languages in the prior beta, but you have lots of new ones like uh, Bangla. I guess I'm pronouncing that right. I'm sorry if I'm not. Uh, you also have Persian, Slovenian, etc. And there's also a new opacity in bold text for live captions under accessibility. So let's go down to live captions beta. And now you'll see the ability under appearance to change the idle opacity. So it reduces the visibility of the live captions button when not in use. You can change that up. And there's also the ability to add bold text as well. Now there's updated iCloud mail settings. So you'll notice when you go to settings, iCloud, iCloud mail, you notice some of the text has changed here. So here it says just iCloud mail, use your existing, but here notice the difference on beta two, send and receive, sync this iPhone versus use on this iPhone for the switch. Now there's also a change to the location of the iCloud mail settings. Previously they appeared in the root portion of iCloud mail settings, but now they're located under a separate panel that slides into view just like that. And there's an updated Siri sound effect when using headphones. So I'm gonna go ahead and pair my AirPods here and let you hear what this new sound sounds like. It's actually really nice. It's not as loud in the ears. It's just a much more pleasing tone uh, when you have AirPods or earphones in. You hear that tone? Quite a bit different than the traditional Siri tone. And again, much better for the ears. Yeah, I could definitely get used to that. Now, one of the big new features for iOS 16 beta three is lockdown mode, which was previewed prior to Apple releasing the beta. And it, this is fully detailed on nine to five Mac. If you want to head over there, you can check that out. Uh, those guys have done a great job of just laying out what all this entails. Now I'm going to actually show you what or how to set up lockdown mode. So appropriately, we'll go to settings and then we'll go to privacy and security. And then if you scroll all the way down to the very bottom, you're going to see under security, lockdown mode. Now what this does, it's a, as Apple puts it, an extreme optional protection that should only be used if you believe you may be personally attacked by a highly sophisticated cyber attack. We're talking like maybe perhaps state sponsored hacks and things like that. It's basically going to lock down or harden your iPhone so that apps and websites and features will be strictly limited. So you can see some of the limitations here. Um, for instance, messages, attachments are blocked for the most part, except for images. You have incoming FaceTime calls that from people you don't know, they're, they're going to be blocked. Uh, so to turn this on, all you have to do is tap turn on lockdown mode and it's going to restart your iPhone just like this and it'll take a second to come back up. And once it does, here we go. I've sped this up a little bit, by the way. So go, go ahead and unlock our phone and it's unlocked. Now to verify, you can go back to settings, go back to privacy and security. Lockdown mode is now on. Uh, and now you can see all the various details on what this thing entails. So Let's discuss a few of the ways that lockdown mode will harden your device. There are lots of things in that list as you saw, but we're going to discuss a few here. For instance, when someone sends you an attachment in the messages app, yeah, that's not coming through. Cannot open message in lockdown mode. This message cannot be open if lockdown mode is on. You can turn off lockdown mode in settings. So that's going to protect you when someone tries an attack on your phone via a message attachment. Also, if you try to install a profile, it's not going to happen in lockdown mode. Configuration profiles cannot be installed while in lockdown mode. That includes betas, VPN profiles, etc. Also, Safari has been locked down as well. You can see lockdown enabled. This is going to restrict things like just in time compilation. 
But here's what's interesting. If you go to your website settings, you can actually turn off lockdown mode on a site-by-site -site basis here. So I can just go ahead and disable lockdown mode. If there's something on this page that isn't loading properly that I need to load, I can do that on a one-off basis. But again, it's gonna give you a warning that this may increase your security risk. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and you'll see the page refresh. Now lockdown mode is disabled for that particular page. You can see in red lettering, lockdown off, just to let you know. Now here is Cellular's official website. If you haven't already checked it out and bookmarked it, go ahead and do so. But you'll notice it looks a little strange. I'm gonna go to website settings, turn lockdown mode off, and notice the font update. Yeah, it didn't load that third party font with lockdown mode on, just like that. Now, just to reiterate, most people, the majority of people are not going to need to use lockdown mode. Uh, just wanna just emphasize that. But if you are someone who is very high profile and you know you have, been, you have been targeted or perhaps may be targeted, this is a way to protect yourself. Now, you can also go into the settings and manage the Safari websites that you've enabled or disabled lockdown mode on. So you can turn off on a one by one, or you can just go in there and clear all those settings or delete individually if you wanna do that. So we'll go ahead and clear all settings and that will restore the default lockdown mode settings for all those websites. Again though, as you can see, lots of other things that lockdown mode prevents, such as FaceTime, shared albums, device connections, etc. Now we went ahead and turned it back off. So at WWDC, Apple revealed iCloud shared libraries and now it's available in beta three. So if you go to settings, photos under library, you're gonna see shared library. You tap that to set it up. And basically what this does is combines photos and videos with the people closest to you. You can have one shared library and whoever creates it provides the iCloud storage for all the items inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and start setup. Here you can add up to five participants and all participants can add, edit, or delete content. So I'm going to set that up later. And then you can move the photos to share it library if you want to. So you can choose all photos except for recently and delete it. You can also choose by people or date. So if you continue there, you can add people and you can configure photos after a specific starting date. And as you modify the date, you'll see the photos either increase or decrease. So obviously if I go to February, I'm gonna have less photos than when I went to you know, a longer period of time in the past, you can see how that decreases with each increase in month or year. But instead I'll choose photos manually and I'll continue here. And then I'll just select a couple of photos. I can show the selected photos if I want to just to verify. And iOS will give you another chance to preview your photos when you tap add. So you can preview your library before sharing. So we'll go ahead and do that. And you'll see the two photos that I added. So I can curate that if I want to, or just tap continue. Now I can invite participants if I wanna do that. And when creating, it'll create a temporary copy of your personal library database to help with moving content. So I'm gonna go ahead and add participants here. So I'll just put in Ducky, go ahead and add. You can see Ducky's there. So invite via messages. So we can go ahead and send this link. Now you also have the option to share automatically with your camera when participants are nearby with Bluetooth enabled. So we can share automatically. And then now your share is ready. So. Let's go ahead and tap done and let's check out the new iCloud shared library feature. So if you tap the ellipses, you'll see you can select between both libraries, your personal library or the shared library. So I'm gonna choose my shared library and that is denoted by the little couple icon there in the upper right hand corner. So you can tap on that and then choose or switch back to your personal library and that'll show just a single little person on that icon. Now let's talk about sharing from the camera app. So I'm gonna open up camera here. You're gonna notice that automatic sharing right now is disabled. So if I take a photo that stays in my personal library, but I can also manually switch. Just tap that little button, the uh, library button to switch between the personal or shared library. So now when I take a photo with the shared library enabled, that's gonna appear in my shared library automatically. So I don't have to do any moving or tagging manually. It just does it. That is really cool. You can also swipe up like this and access that library button from this menu as well to switch between shared and personal. So that's one of the really cool features here of iCloud Share Libraries. Now, obviously there's a lot more to this. It is still a little bit buggy that I've experienced, but there are quite a few options to configure. For instance, you can go into the settings and enable shared library suggestions, which will periodically show you suggested photos and videos that you can add to your shared library. You can also modify settings from the sharing from camera feature that I just showed you so you can share automatically or share manually. 
automatically will work when it detects that you're with a participant and Bluetooth is enabled. You can also share at home even when other participants are not there. Now all shared library participants can edit, they can delete photos, and you can choose to receive delete notifications if you want to. Now, if you head back over to the camera preferences, you're gonna notice basically a duplicate shared library preference page for managing sharing from camera. So I have Ducky invited, you can see everything's in sync. So when I make a change, this will affect every participant. So this photo will be deleted for all shared library participants and from iCloud Photos. So when I delete here, it should delete here as well. And when I make an edit on one, it should apply that edit to all. And uh, yeah, it's still a little bit buggy from what I've experienced. Some of the syncing isn't quite working uh, as it should, but again, this is a beta and uh, your mileage may vary right now in this beta. But here, if I make changes, for instance, if I add a filter or make any other change, those changes should take effect on all devices. Now, there's also for your shared library under For You, which will basically suggest items to move to your shared library. And there's more. We'll explore this much deeper in the future, but you can delete your shared library, of course, as well. You can choose to keep everything or keep only what you contributed. So we're gonna go ahead and delete. And you'll see in the settings where it's still working on that deletion, you'll be able to create or join a library later once this completes. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at iOS 16 developer beta three. If you enjoyed this video, let me know down below in the comment section and leave a thumbs up. Also subscribe for more videos like this and be sure to check out my full walkthrough of beta two and my two plus hour walkthrough of all iOS 16 features and changes. This is Jeff with Cellular.